Hi, Ginger Cook here, and for our acrylic painting today, we're going to be exploring chrysanthemums. These are not just ordinary chrysanthemums. These were originally painted late 1800s by a French artist, which we're going to talk about. One I don't think you're familiar with, but he hung out with the Paul Cezanne and the rest of them. And uh, Goulimont is his name, and Armand Goulimont. And we're going to be painting step-by-step -step chrysanthemums, and we're going to tell you uh, some wonderful stories and about uh, what's going on with John and I. And this is going to be really fun. See you then. And now, without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the Mother of Artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning Master Acrylic Artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylics. Okay, so we're going to be starting painting chrysanthemums, and I want, I think this is going to be surprise you how easy this is, but there's a lot of layers. We've got a lot of colors to use because these are fall, this is a fall flower, which is, a, you see them all over the world. The biggest ones I ever saw in my life were in Japan years ago before my daughter was even born. Couldn't believe the size, but these are smaller French ones, and I don't think they were probably larger than a tangerine, okay? But what I love about this painting is going to be the complementary colors. We're going to explain a little bit about that. We're going to have as a premiere, because John, if you're watching this, John and I were traveling at the time we first aired this show. So you're going to see some live chat on the side of the screen if you're watching it after the premiere. And that's John and I interacting with our audience. So I hope you catch our premiere shows. They're as fun as our live ones when we're traveling. And just let's follow along now and paint some chrysanthemums. I've scooted on down to the test top there, sir. Okay. All right. Captain. So you see, well, I have an eight by ten of this, and I felt that these flowers needed more breathing room. How's that? I did it as an eight by ten, so now I have a twelve by twelve canvas, and I'm going to just I want more breathing room for my flowers. So I know that, for instance, I'm about four fingers up like this. Somehow there's a there's going to be kind of the table. And um, my vase is going to be about like yay. So what is that? Four fingers and three fingers wide. <laughs> I love it. Now, what's interesting is you're looking down on the vase, right? Which is a little bit differently. So we're coming here like this. This, this edge drops way down and goes back up a little wider because we're looking, we're looking down on these flowers, all right? Now the artist Armand that uh, painted these, it's interesting, you know how he became a full-time painter? This is so cool. He won the lottery. He won 900 francs in the lottery. And he was able to quit his job and become a full-time painter. He actually went to art school with Cezanne and um, some other one, one of the other guys, and they were lifelong friends. Van Gogh's brother sold his artwork. I mean, he was at all the art shows that the other guys were. He just didn't get this level of success, but he's in tons of art museums. He was known for his colors his bright, beautiful colors, and he certainly understood, if you look at this, he understood complementary colors. If you don't know what that is, a complementary color is one that's opposite itself on a color wheel, and, and if you put them together, there's just something really pleasing about it. Take your color wheel out the next time you're watching football games and notice the uniforms and how they play off co complementary colors. Um, oh, that's the first thing I would do when I'm watching a football game, is whip out my <laughs> color wheel. That is top on my list to do. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, no doubt. Oh, look at the Bengals outfit tonight. Let, let's get out our color wheel and let's dial it in and make sure they're complimentary. I just can't wait till the fall season. <laughs> I don't know what to say after that. To you, I mean, just, well, poo, right? Those of you who want to know that, it's interesting. They thought this out. They just didn't pick willy-nilly colors. No, of course, no, they use the color wheel. There, there, you make it sound like it's a bad thing. A color wheel, like that's a bad thing, John. I don't have to tell you. All right, so we've we got... We all love our color wheel. We all love our color wheel. So basically we've got, 
what I would say now that we're doing a square, I want you to think about a triangle like this. Okay, coming down like this, like a curved triangle like that, like a piece of pie, right, like that, right? There's a piece of pie. Okay, now that's where my flowers, the majority of my flowers are going to be in this piece of pie. And then I've got one that's going to be over this way. And I've got a, um, there's my, actually my pie ends here. And then I've got, got I'm going to have like some flowers that are going like that. And then a few lone scattered ones. But this is basically the area where the flowers are going to be in. Now what he did, which made a really busy painting if you were to look it up, he had some sort of a, a drapery that, that ended back here, and then he had this thing here, and it was just confusing. So we're going to bring the, the blues down a little farther and then get into the ultramarines and then into the um, browns. So I'm changing it up just a bit. You're welcome to just look at his picture and do it just like he did. Knock yourself out. We're not doing that. So, But I think what we're going to end up with is a really cool painting. So the colors we've got are a ooh, lot today. Ooh, we've got ooh, a lot of colors. Tons of colors. And we've got titanium white, which is what you normally think of, a diosmine purple, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, thalo blue. We're also going to add thalo green. We have cad red medium, naphtha crimson, which is your you know primary red. We've got magenta, and then I had a couple of other extra reds I had in the box. I just grabbed them out, just some different reds. They don't look all that different. This was a lizard a crimson, and this was another bright red. And then I have. A cad yellow medium, yellow oxide, burnt umber, and this is unbleached titanium, which is sort of an off-white. So if you didn't have that, you could add white and a little bit of burnt umber together and make that pretty good and tiny bit of yellow oxide. You could make that if you wanted. It's just that sometimes it's nice to just have the colors. And why don't you be very uh, aware of the brush direction of the brush strokes. They're all going to be going down at this angle. And then as they get over this way, they're going to start changing. And then they end up at the table, they start to level off. And they're going, everything's now going this way. So down this way, everybody's following me. Then they start, I guess they start going, maybe they start going this way and then that way, okay? So, and that's important. Your brush direction makes for a very interesting movement in it. And we're not going to try to worry about draperies or all that stuff. We're just concentrating on the flowers and the colors. And the easiest thing to do is have a nice angle brush like this. All right. It looks like a and I'm half gonna, inch this is or a, three quarter. This is a three, five eighths. Ooh, yeah, something nice and large that. one. Okay. And so if I'm going to start off with um, a little bit of the unbleached titanium and a little phthalo green, right? And let's add a little bit of phthalo, let's add a little bit of phthalo blue to that. Okay, and so that's a little bright. So what do you do? If you take a tiny bit of magenta, kind of calm that down, right? That's pretty good. Let's add a little bit of light. Let's make some a little bit lighter. Let's have two-tone on this, right? So light on one side, dark on the other. And let's start coming down like this. Um, just tap this in here, okay? Now that you kind of see our pattern, I don't have to keep it too much. You got, we're just going to tap this in here like that. You can make little brush strokes if you want, but tapping it in works pretty well, okay? Now, as we do this, do it fairly quickly. Just try to remember the direction of the brush strokes. This is very impressionistic, okay? Oh, well, I see somebody asked what color is the background we're currently using? Well, the actual background, I think, was ultramarine blue, don't you think, John? A little bit I of white, with, and, a little white. Th with a little bit of phthalo in it, but just any old blue background would have done. Okay, so I'm going to start bringing this in and a little further. And this is on a 12 by 12 canvas. 12 by 12 canvas. Thank you, John. I wouldn't have thought to do that. <laughs> and if, if sometimes in our live shows, we get a lot of chat going. Most of our chat is sort of on the side. And so this is probably closer, except for that in my um, art academy, Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting, which we teach really awesome uh, acrylic paintings from very beginner, never saw a paintbrush to... Um, ultimate paintings, really advanced ultimate paintings, the, um, there's just my voice and the painting, and sometimes I really focused on it. So we'll try to make this fun uh, at two and, and have some fun with this, but this is probably not, not quite as lively a chat as you would find if we're live, 
But what I'm going to do about every few minutes is I'm going to tell you something you really needed to know. And so pay attention. So you need, yeah. <laughs> There'll be a test at the end. <laughs> There's a test at the end, right. So that's stuff you really, really needed to know. Okay? And that so, would be one of the key items right off the bat was color wheel football game hand in hand. That's right. I mean, you know, just. <laughs> do not well, forget that. Well, were you the kind of person that watched football games when I was a kid? I did enjoy a fine football game. Just any particular football game, John, or just any old game with just some particular game teams? You had a team you liked? I always liked the Patriots because they always pressed the rules. Um, really? Oh, yeah. And so, yeah. But, but you weren't, but you didn't live anywhere near that team. Oh, no. that was the best, you know. No, I was up in, I would, people would think I would be a Detroit fan because I was in Michigan. And then I was a Buckeye because I was born in Columbus. Okay, and then of course you lived in Florida for a while, so you should have been a Dolphin fan, yes? Dolphin. Didn't know I knew that, did you? Ooh, look at you swimming around with a Dolphin. Did I ever tell you, you know I've got a great uh, football story. I'm oh, here we go, football Some of you may have heard season. this, but i got to tell you this. Well, we're just tapping in mindlessly here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get, well, I'm telling you that I'm going to get a little burnt sienna, okay? And I'm going to come in here and start adding some of and that. It's a straight burnt sand on straight, a dirty brush. Just on a dirty brush. So back before Cinnamon was born, I lived in Aspen, Colorado. And we were skiers. Her dad and I were skiers. That's how we met. We were skiers. And um, so anyhow, uh, a friend of ours owned a shop where you got your skis waxed. In those days, you had to wax your skis. And if you had some money, you could get a guy to use a machine, a professional heated on there supposed to, it used to be like a bar of soap and you'd wax your skis okay but then if you had money you'd go to a ski shop and they'd melt the wax and really do a first class job is there so, a big difference oh gosh yes okay. and so anyway we didn't always do it but we'd gone in there to get uh, we, the colby knew that guy so we'd gone in there to do that and um and they were at those days that, that was the first high school they were uh, the high aspen was expanding this was back in 19 65 and Aspen was really expanding and they were they had they were running a raffle notice I'm kind of curving some of this a little bit this way now okay um, they were running a raffle for the um, to build uh, for the high school and um, second prize was a saddle I can't remember what third prize was and second prize was what was a saddle okay F first <laughs> first prize I think was a new car Wow. It was a new car. It was a big deal. So they were car. raising some serious they money. They were raising some serious money. And, and so the second prize was a saddle. Whatever. I, I think so. I'm pretty sure that was it. So um, uh, the, the, but there were some rich people in Aspen. I'm telling you what. Even back then, there were just some really rich people. So as I add the next color, I'm going to add a little yellow oxide to the thalo green and the thalo blue. The new color here. Okay. And a little white, I think. There we go. That's a different color. See that? We're going to put this in here now. We're just going to start laying Still this Still a dirty brush. Haven't cleaned it yet. No, don't clean the brush. So anyway, there was this guy in here. They're getting his skis waxed. And uh, Forrest, uh, the guy that owned the shop, and I, we were friends. And so we were just hanging out with him after he'd waxed ours. And so he tried, was trying to get anybody that came in there. He was trying to sell them a raffle ticket. That was his. He had kids. And, and you know, obviously, they were going to be going to that high school at some point. So... He asked this guy if he wanted to buy a raffle tacket, and the guy said sure. And he was busy doing something with some bindings, and he just uh, so Forrest was writing down the information, filling out the ticket for him, and um, so he just said, well, he gave his name, and and you know, then Forrest said, yeah, he said, what address do you want to use? And he says, well, just use the just say Dallas Cowboys, Dallas, Texas. And then um, you know, nobody raised an eye. And then he said, I don't really care about the car, but I wouldn't mind having the saddle and I said if you're a cowboy don't you already have a saddle <laughs> <laughs> and that's a perfectly legitimate because, question I'm sorry I'd never heard of them nobody watched football at our house and I had never heard of this group of cowboys and did he have a good snappy comeback well, I think he was trying to impress us. I look back at my wedding photos. I was kind of a cute kid back then, right? And I think and you're he was still a cute kid. Thank you. But I think he was really trying to impress us. And it just, me and six million Chinese people had no idea what he was talking about. You know, just us. But uh, it was explained it was a football team. Because I thought it was kind of a strange address, too. And then as a horseback rider, as a champion horseback rider, 
which I was a champion horseback rider as a horseback rider, uh, horses are really funny things. You, you don't just give anybody a pair of shoes. You buy the shoes that are their size. Each horse has a saddle that fits them. It's yeah. not a miscellaneous saddle that can go on any stupid horse. It doesn't work like that. So, no, it has to fit their girth. Yeah, it has to fit their withers, their girth, their back. Well, you can get a girth for it, John. You can get a girth. You can get the strap. That you can buy separately. But the saddle actually has to fit across their back and their withers and all that. And be. Uh, this is some ultramarine blue now, in case you guys were wondering. All by itself? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it has to start, it has to fit all that stuff, you know, and then, and, and um, usually what we would do, in fact, I have been known to bring my horse to a tax store and, um, to a what? Uh, like a tax store. That's where you buy horse equipment. It's called a tax, store? tax store. A tax store. Uh -huh, not like thumbtacks, but tack. Uh, okay. Like horse tack. Uh, of course. I knew that. Uh, yeah, I can see that from, the, from your <laughs> face, right? I can see that you knew that. A little ultramarine blue. Here we go. Just I'm a little background, that. right? Now we're going to start bringing in some darker blue in here, and Still a little magenta ultramarine and blue. ultramarine blue. Going we'll start coming down into this area here and start getting it darker as we go down this way. Just uh, have fun with this, you guys. Play some music, dance around. We don't dance here, but you know we're not dancers. <laughs> we're not dance. dancers or singers. No music. But there's no music. They there's come no to dancing. The wrong channel. I'm lightening up some of this too. I think I want a little. That's too light. Let's take a little thalo with that and ultramarine blue. There, didn't like, ooh, don't like that. Let's just take that right off. Here, check, mix, 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 mix. There, see? All right, so more a little bit of ultramarine blue, a little dusting purple. See, there, there, there are no mistakes in acrylic painting. No, we're just going to get it purpler and darker down here. And we're just going to come on into this way, kind of around like this. And remember, we're going to start changing the brush direction. So just as we keep tapping this around, a little bit of ultramarine blue, we're going to go this way, a little bit of purple. Ultramarine blue together. Yeah, so that was sort of funny. I mean, because nobody, we ne I never watched football. In fact, in, in high school. Did um, you ever I, go to the football games, the high school football games? Uh, once. Huh. And I sat with the coach. Okay, that's and, not fun. At lunch. At lunch. He was marvelous. He, you know, they always had a teacher at lunch on your table because it was a private boarding school. And so I sat with him, and I thought he was obnoxious. Didn't care about his games. <laughs> Stupid game. Yeah, running around with a just, pig skin. Just one total waste of time. But anyway, um, <laughs> it just was never my thing. And then years later, we had some friends that, um, um, back into the blues here, we had some friends that um, Still always learning. had season tickets to the Houston Oilers. Um, the guy sold um, textbooks to school teachers, and he would make sure he had box seats and wine and dine them, bring them gifts and jewelry so they'd buy his textbooks. How about that? That's how we got them all. for the education of our children. Yeah, uh-huh. So we don't know if his textbooks were any good or not, but that's how we got them sold. So we'd, we'd meet these different teachers at that because he'd always hit, I think he had like four or five boxes of, you know, areas of, I, I think he has a block of 12 seats or something that we could set it. So we went for a while. I, when, when I first came to Houston, I, I went a few football games. Um, I and, find it's a lot easier to watch on TV. Well, I just there's a they lot. Even have instant just, replay. Just, you know, there, instant, it was bo boring. A lot of a lot of stuff. That I brought a book. <laughs> you know, Hillary Clinton got a lot of static for bringing a book to a football game, but I sure understood that. I mean, you, whatever else you want to say about her, I didn't think that. You know, there's nothing wrong with bringing a book. She brought a book, and she got a lot of static for that. Well, I can't believe she'd bring a book. Well, you know, she no, did. Well, why not? All right, so um, let's see. I don't want any magenta or any of that color, so let me rinse that off. The so brush. why'd you make it? Well, because I saw it somewhere here, but I don't want it because it's going to interfere with the flowers. So I'm just going to take some white and um, some titanium white and uh, ultramarine blue, and we're going to go with a little bit of lighter color. Maybe we'll just put some white on the brush because this is still wet. We're going to go with some lighter colors in here like this and maybe even some phthalo green and ultramarine blue and white. Let's see what we get. A little more ultramarine blue. Um, hmm. Ah, I know what we're going to do. I don't want that color either. Isn't that fun? I don't want that color either. The color we're going to want is, hold your breath, magenta and and ultramarine blue and white. Let's see how that's kind of purple, but if I put more blue in it, it won't be. There. Now, look how bright that blue is. Isn't that pretty? That's the color I want. See? It just... That's exactly the color we want. So and we all knew how to get to that. Well, I 
that's an interesting way to get this color. It's like three quarters of the um, uh, uh, ultramarine blue, some white, and a tiny bit of magenta, and you get this really bright periwinkle blue. So it's just we're just tapping. It seems that like old periwinkle has been showing up in a lot of paintings lately. Is that your new buddy? I'm really loving that color. It's yeah. just so we did that in the Venice piece, that new Venice piece that we did. And I think I want to just, as long as we're doing that, let's take that, let's just make some more of that. And um, let's just paint this vase in right here, because that's the, let's nice just get that vase, vase. Just, we'll just get that vase shape in, as long as we're playing around, you guys, right? Let's just paint this vase in. This is kind of fun, we're reminiscing about football games and all that stuff. Now, I, my dad was a judge, and um, my mother didn't like television. So if, um, if he liked football, we never knew it because mother didn't like it, so nobody watched it. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> Go in another room, lady. Well, no, there was one TV, and, and it was black and white, and even though we could afford oh, color. Oh, wow. We only got a color TV when she was trying to watch an art show, and she couldn't. So there, let's just do this like this. Let's put a little white on it and just come around here like this and lighten up the edge here. Was she formally trained at all? No, in art? she just took art lessons places from people. But she started painting when she was in her 50s. You know, probably 60, 50, 60, something like that. And uh, she painted, she was a pretty good artist too. She really was. She was but good at mainly it. earth tones from what you've said before. But, but, yeah, mostly earth, earth tones and very boring stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, it wasn't my thing. You know, my, as, as, my, my room obvious. was all in, I'm gonna do some burnt sienna now. My burnt, my room was all in earth tones. Well, I had a very boring room, all in earth tones. Thus the reason that you're the queen of color now. Yeah, but it's interesting. Some years ago, Cinnamon, when Cinnamon was about 16, I had looked at a condominium that was all in... Some um, anyway, we were gonna we were gonna look at the, we looked at this condominium and it was a it was the designer mo I guess the decorator model and the last one to sell. She was about 16. I was looking at buying it, sell my house and buying it, and everything was in seafoam green. I just both of us fell in love with that. But I've never done a house in seafoam green, even though I love those colors. It's a great color. I just I love that color. We were kind of introducing them to our current kitchen. Well, we do. We have it in our kitchen, don't we? We have that seafoam green color because I love that color, which is interesting. That you know, it's just funny how you get colors. There was a study some years ago on um, how color affects the psycho psychology of people, and they discovered that um, if you look at a peach. A wall, it becomes you. You got, you're very calm, and they found if they put that in, um, like holding cells for prisoners that were drunk and violent, it calmed people down. And they did an experiment where they had someone they painted something about this size, peach color, and um, peaches, yellow, um, red, and white, right, to make this to make a peach. And um, most mostly white, like about 95% white. And they had someone lift weights, and then they had them look at the peach color for a while, and then they weren't able to lift the weights as easily. <laughs> it really does. A, it's a, it's a, it, you know, if you're have, so they then they discover that certain colors you never want in a bedroom. For instance, red. You don't want red in a bedroom because that, that because that it's not even that it keeps. No. It just it's not conducive to sleep. But then they discovered. Now, should I say this? <laughs> yeah, say it. Yeah, say yeah, it. yeah. Say Don't it. hold back now. Don't hold back now. That they said that if you were a single person, and what was the expression, wanted to get lucky? <laughs> <laughs> that a red bedspread was the fastest That's way to get That's the ticket? Was the fastest way to get lucky. That there was something about that. So then perhaps it isn't conducive to sleep. So again, depends on 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 what you want what here, you're I suppose, to do in what that your goal, room. ultimate goal is with the room, <laughs> I suppose, right? 
I, I don't, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Come on, that is just, you guys, that's so interesting. That was well worth watching so far. So far, <laughs> just, you think? <laughs> I mean, that alone, who cares about the painting? <laughs> just the tidbits you're giving me. <laughs> I'm telling you, I mean, how can you never watch a football game just Without kind of a color football wheel. game with your color wheel? Nope, they just, Can't not do the it. thing, you know. All right, so I'm getting a little bit lighter here, here, a little bit of yellow oxide in here. See, it's kind of lightening up this area here. You're going, I don't know, Ginger, it just looks kind of funny. Well, his painting was very busy and funny. In fact, it was too busy. If I were to talk to him and take him aside, I'd say, you know, my darling, it's a great painting, but it's a little busy, you know? So we're just toning it down, yeah? And let's get a little purple in here in the, in the bottom of this. Let's just tap a little purple in here like that. See, everything is layers. And so it's, this painting's going to take a second because it's layers. And some lady's going to write and say, I wish you would talk so much. I can't think what you're doing. If you need total focus, of course, you could just turn off the sound. That would be a thought. Right? <laughs> wow. Um, or you could become an Academy member because there's, not, not, there's less of this chatting going on, more focus. Okay. But for us, this is kind of, I think this is kind of fun. Now, this is we, our show, social hour. This is our social hour. So I'll get a little bit of purple and ultramarine blue. A little tiny bit of yellow, maybe a little bit of white. That yellow was the oxide? Yeah, a little yellow oxide. Now I want to come around here like this and create what I might consider a little bit of a shadow coming off my vase here. And I want to just put a little more white with that. Okay, just really got to mix that in though. I don't want any light white. And I want it a little bit more purple, a little bit of ultramarine blue. There we go. Okay, so let's, is that light enough? Here, we want a little bit of light up in here. There's some light overlays of light coming this way. And I, this is really, this side's really light. Let's really lighten this up here. So, all right, so I said about every five minutes I would tell you something extremely interesting. I don't know how extremely interesting it really is, but we'll keep it up, right? So, John and I, are giving, we, we, one of the things that I find is that there's so much information in all our tutorials that who remembers where I told you what? <laughs> some of them we give you ideas on how to grid and some we tell you how to get grid without using, if you didn't have Sorel transfer paper. Some of you tell you how to, you know, do, you know, we have a lot of information on how to do things. Yes and yes? And you have to watch all the videos and you to just find got, it you know, And then maybe you don't remember. So we had this idea. We're going to have something on our website for our Academy members called Tools. And tools of the very, Trade. Tools of the Trade. Very short videos. You know, be focused. Max 10 minutes on just... Focused videos. Focused videos on, for instance, how to do a grid. Um, you know, how to lay out a painting. Uh, fast things like that. The, the, you know, the, you know, the two-line grid. Two-line grid? Yeah, see, then, then already I've got you intrigued. The two-line grid. You do. That's like the two-step, the two-line grid. We're going to talk about... Um, that sounds you know, like just four squares. Well, don't get smart with me. I, <laughs> I have a video to make. Don't, <laughs> don't spoil it. <laughs> oh, I don't know what that could possibly be, a two-line grid. <laughs> People are going to be clamoring at the website now looking for it. They're going to be tearing the website up, looking for something that doesn't exist yet. You know, this is something she comes to me. She calls me up. She couldn't get me on my phone. Why couldn't she get me on my phone? She didn't call my number. She calls another number. She comes up here and says, why didn't you answer the phone? I look at my phone. Nothing on my phone. No call from Ginger. No missed call from Ginger. There's nothing here. Oh, I called you. I go, no. Who might you have called? Oh, I might have called Joe. Joe, John, close enough. Well, you're right next to each other. I'm yeah. going to put some of So she comes up and says, it was a brilliant here. idea. I want to do these short videos so we can have everything in one spot for our, our members of the Academy so they'll be able to grasp this information right away. And that was just moments ago she asked me to do that. Yeah. It was great, too, huh? Great idea, right? So all these little things. And then there'll be, you know, there'll be certain videos that we've got that, you know, explain certain things. I'm going to just sort of keep it back into the dark here now. A little bit of purple here on the edges. Here, uh, there's certain videos that explain certain things. And um, I know that's very vague, but 
us. Well, I mean, just by work that, us. With it. Just, just the, work with us. Here. You know, they. But for instance, some tell about color mixing, how to make a color mixing journal. I have videos that tell you all kinds of things, and some, what I would call tools, are really kind of need to, you know, really need to know some stuff. So those videos, we're going to put just a little list, maybe 15, 20 videos that. We'll have a link to it. may have a lot more by the time we're done, but they're going to be short, <laughs> quickie little videos. Yeah, short, quickie little videos on stuff that, that I feel like if you knew this stuff, your life would be better. And that's what all we're trying to do is make your life better. Yeah, my life would be better too, so it wouldn't be like Groundhog Day repeating myself either. <laughs> Just <laughs> listen, I have a video on that. Why don't you watch it? Then come back, then get back to me, right? All right, so you see, we've got sort of a kind of like a midnight look. Yeah, you've got this, we've got this pattern all kind of, let's get a little dark coming down from the top, because he had some of that too. Let's bring a little dark down here like that, and then a little bit of the light over it. Here's a little green over it. Here we go. Just going to bring some of this down. It's a little phthalo green and white here. I want some of this down over it. One a little bit darker coming down here. When you do the next layer, now look what happens. I know I'm doing a lot of crazy layers, but you got to work with me here. See, now this is the next layer, and this um, you don't get this effect without all these layers. Um, it was tiring looking at his. There were so many layers, but that's okay. I want you to show you that it's just one step at a time. Don't panic. It's one step at a time, and you see how we're starting to fill this in. Yeah, yes and yes. And um, so we're starting to just come on down here like this. Let's see, a little bit more thalo green. I want to make sure I don't really want any white on here. That's the thing. I don't want any white on. It can have a light color, but I don't want any white. So we're just going to come on down here like this and uh, keep going here like that. So um, anyway, if you're looking for some really interesting stuff, you want to glance every once in a while at the chat if you're not if you're watching this later, here's a little bit of yellow with that thalo green. Wow, that got green. What would happen if we added some brown to that? We don't know. That's still green. How about some thalo blue? That's still, now that's blue. That's a pretty color. All right, let's add some of that color in here. All right, so, so far so good. Yes and yes. Uh, how about some of this color? A little bit of that um, unbleached titanium. There, let's make sure. I don't want to see any of that, just the lighter colors. I'm going to mix that really well. Now, here we go. So a little bit lighter, lighter still, lighter, lighter, lighter. Here we go. Here we go. A little bit lighter in here. So I want to, I want to start highlighting some areas. Can you kind of see what we're doing? It's just not everywhere, but I'm highlighting sort of the right-hand side here, like this, and. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of this color kind of over here next to the pot, just in a couple places. All right, so I think that's about, you know, we could we could spend another two hours fooling around with this, but we're not going to do it, okay? All right, we just probably will take, um, we're probably going to take some of the dark and come up this way a little bit, like that. Just I'd rinse my brush, get that light off, and just come on up here like that, okay? So we're just going to bring that. Now I'm going to. Um, this is all dry. So I, I would I could dry this, but um, see it already looks very impressionistic, doesn't it? it? Has almost a Van Gogh feel to it. So um, let's take some titanium white and a little tiny bit of ultramarine blue, not very much, right? And what we want to do is lighten this vase. It's not quite white, but it's it's getting there, okay? So we want to come down around. I'm going to make it a little bit wider. All right. And uh, so this is where the blending comes in. We're going to start blending in some, some lights and darks. Uh, he's got kind of the light, which is weird. He's got the light almost. He's got a shadow here, but the light really is the way he has the painting. He didn't really think out his light as well as he might have. Sorry, Fend, but you didn't. And... Um, so there's a little bit of light back here on the back of this uh, vase, right like this, where his, and you'll see a little bit here up on the top of this, and then a little bit more of the blue here. Here's this kind of, this is your next layer of color, and it's important to do that. See, it's just, it's sort of an off-white, and then he's got more, more white down here, 
with this next little layer of vase under here, kind of like a little foot that the vase is sitting on, like so. And then when you get to the other side, it's still light, but it's not lighter than what we originally painted it in. Okay. There, like that. And then let's see. The trick is to make sure that it's what you're doing, that this bottom layer is dry. If the bottom layer isn't dry, then it's going to get all mucky on you. All right, so that's, I'm looking at that going, I've got my little foot here, and it's totally off balance, but don't, don't panic. I'm just, I will make some adjustments after I get most of this painted in. Here's a little more white right here. I want this a little lighter in the center. Um, just something like that, kind of. Use the back. See, I'm using the very back side of this brush to sort of blend that lighter stuff in. And I think I want some purple and brown here. And say, my um, my foot ends. Whoops, the white on the brush there. My foot is ending. Here, let's just wipe that off. Um, here's the here's the dark under my foot, like that at the foot of the vase. So burnt umber and purple. I think we'll just go with that. And um, so our, there's our vase right here, like this, kind of coming around like that. All right, so that's kind of, that's what I'm looking at it. And then I see that his is a little shorter and squatter and fatter than mine. So let's bring this out like that. So you can, you can change so much when you're painting. It's really cool. You can just, if you don't have the shape right, just don't sweat the small stuff. Just change it. Okay, so see how we kind of widen that little vase up there like that? And then he had, on the sides of this, he had like a little, almost like an ear here on this side. Maybe probably the side of a little handle. Doop, 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 doop. All right, something like that. All right, so that, my dear friends, is the vase. And you want to make sure that you follow the circle all around, like widen that like that. And let's see, is that going to... Do to do, come on out the wider still. There you go. See, I'm twisting the brush. Okay. And then happily for us, the inside is dark. Here's the inside of this face, a little bit of brown and purple, and it's very dark. This is as dark as it's going to get. The inside of this is nice and dark, so we don't care about. We're only going to see about this much of it of the inside. We're not going to fill the whole thing in because the rest is going to be flowers. There, so there's the inside. See, so we're looking down on the pot, okay? And then we'll put some of this dark shadow color in here like this. Bring some of this dark back this way. And out like that. Yes and yes. And this, you we're know, with you. We're not really outlining it, but we'll just do something like that. There we go. So there's our pot. And I kind of like it. I think it's kind of cute. So then, now the fun part comes in, putting in all the flowers, yeah? Isn't that big dark area you need to dry first? Yes, it does. What about the top? Do you think that's dry too? I think we're going to dry the whole thing. What do you think? I would suggest maybe drying the whole I'm thing. Gonna, just before to I do that, I'm going to miss my paints just lightly. They've been out here for what, about 30 minutes? Approximately 40 minutes. Okay, so we're going to miss them. Then they'll be all happy again, all right? Happy paints. All right, we'll be back after this. Hi. When John Little and I Hi. first got together. Um, he was in Michigan and I was in Houston. We started the Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting about four and a half years ago. And our goal was to take people who'd never painted before and really show them the basics that you needed, that foundation of acrylic painting, all the way up to the highest level of something you might find in a museum. And I've got to tell you that the artists that have uh, been with us for this uh, even just a couple of years are painting things you wouldn't believe started out painting party very simple art maybe that's why they got interested and now they've come over to the Academy with through the aid of personal art coaching I'm telling you what you won't believe all the wonderful reasons why you want to become an Academy member but most of all most of all it just takes the groundhog day out of painting. Because if you're making the same mistakes over and over again every time you paint, it's got to be a little frustrating. Let's get better every time we paint. Come join the Academy. Boy, you cut that one close. I did. Pretty good, though. Yeah, we did good. All right, so I had a yellow pencil. I wonder what I did with it. Should uh, I get for you, my queen? 
Yeah, maybe we'll use this one. Uh, that, I'm going to try not to use this one because that is hard to... This one writes well, that other one, but the chalk is very hard to paint over. The chalk oh, is terrible to enough. paint over. So you, it's okay, but you really don't want it. So Do you want see. me to find your yellow? It was out. I had it out. Oh, here it is. I found it. There. Thanks, son. All right. So we're going to start here. Always wait until I stand up so before this, you find Yeah. Something. So remember I told you we had like a triangle? So the first flower, let's, let's, let's just say this is 6 o'clock and this is 12 o'clock right here, right? 6, 12, yeah? We can do that. 9, nine 3, yeah? So right about 3 o'clock, I'm going to just make a circle and say there's a flower and there's a half flower right here. There's going to be another little flower right there, okay? And then right about 6 o'clock here, we're going to do a flower that's shaped like that. It's looking down at us, all right? And underneath it is another little flower that's doing this, okay? Okay, there's our flower. Then here, above here, right about here, we've got another flower. And um, we're going to make this one here a little bigger. We don't have it quite big enough. And we're going to do another flower like that. And we're going to do, so we've got two that are kind of looking at us, okay? This one's kind of swishing down. And then up here, we have a flower. Now just sort of track it, so, you know, kind of do it where I'm doing it, right? Got a flower there. Then this flower has two bigger, slightly bigger flowers off of it, like that. Do you see that? One, two, three. And then it's got, there's these two. And then right here is a bigger flower, right, like that. That's even bigger. And then here's one above it. It's even bigger, kind of oval, like that. And then above it is a small one, a little round one right there. There's two, like that, here and here, okay? And then we've got a, there's these two. And then we've got, okay, so let's just start back down here again, okay? Maybe I can change colors when we get up to here so you can see it. So we've got this one, this one, this one. All right, so that there's that, that's one, two, three. And then we've got a few ones. All right, well, I want to get back into our middle. So this is our big one. We have two here. And then we've got a nice big one above here to the side like this. We've got a nice big one looking out this way to the side. It's kind of a half, half one. All right, maybe a little tiny one there, but a half one there. And then he's built up some flowers here and then a half flower underneath it. And then we're coming over here and saying there's another big flower right here. And then we're going to put one. He's got, he's got so many. We're not putting all his flowers. We're sorry, babe. We're not putting all your flowers. And he's got so many. And I think he's got another one kind of sticking up like this. And another one, half one sticking up like this. And then we'll, we'll, we'll add some more as we go. Now over here on the right-hand side, he's got some that are coming they shot out there. That they shot out to the side. They're like this one. Like little satellites. There's little satellite flowers. Here's a half one like that. Another half one. They go up in an arch like that. And then he's got some up here. And then he's got some loose ones over here and here. But we'll get our main ones in, okay? So that's how we're going about this. Because that's, that's what makes sense to me. So some flowers are going to be darker than others. He's got some that are very bright orange, some that are a dark orange, a couple purple ones. So we're going to start with a smaller brush, maybe a small angle brush like this. this Probably would a 3-8. Uh, yeah, 3 eighths inch angle brush. And let's just start with this one, and I'll show you how we're going to do it. Where Which, do you get your brushes at? I tell you what, I'm, um, I, I like the ruby satin silver brushes. And our, our friends, the brush guys, thebrushguys.com, where we buy our brushes and for this reason because they respect our YouTube audience and um, have been catering to us since day one. They carry any number of brands of brushes. It doesn't matter which ones you buy, whether the ones I recommend or my daughter's art chirper brushes, doesn't matter. If you use my name, all one word, Ginger Cook, you get a 5% discount at checkout and they ship globally. So I just say sometimes you'll see other companies and they'll put the brushes on sale, but these guys have good low prices all year long and if you sign up Every for their day. newsletter occasionally they give away free brushes they're, yeah, they're they a nice specials company periodically from now and then so yeah very fast service 
Yeah, so here we go. You saw that. Now look, we're doing it the same way that we just did the, the, the background. So that was a little yellow and, and cad red medium, yeah. Is this a certain, is there a certain name for this style of painting? It's Impressionism, than, for sure. Just, oh, well, duh. Okay, so no, not really. No, it's like just they all had some it's different. Not a, it's not a pointillism uh, or something like that. No, it's Impressionism. Okay, so just now no we're going to do, right. uh, we're going to change it a little bit and add a little bit more red to this. This is just the first layer. We're going to come up here and here's a more of an orange flower here like this. We're just going to put that in. We're just making our map, right? And, um. There was a little bit on the outside. I'm getting a little bit of a. There was some on the outside of this one. There was some lighter stuff. That was the unbleached titanium. Okay. Let's get a close up of a couple of those guys. Yeah. So now I've got a. Then remember we have one here and we have one there and then I've got another nice big one right here on the edge of the pot. So we're going to start off with the unbleached titanium. On a dirty brush, you still have a, a little dirty bit dirty brush, of a... so you still have a little orange in it. There's a real advantage with just wiping your brush off and using a dirty brush. And then let's get a little bit of that yellow um, and orange color. Come in here on the top of it. See? Cool, you must right? do the sound effects to get the full benefit. That's it. So now there's that one, and then there's another little one. Um, there's one here which is purple, but there's another little one. Let's take some red and burnt sienna. Yeah, red is nap red. Yeah, nap yeah, red and burnt sienna. There's almost a, a little brown one coming up here like this behind this one. And again, we haven't washed the brush. And there's one here too. This little one on the edge of the pot that I told you about right here on the lip, that starts off pretty dark. See, and just this angle brush is just perfect for that. See, just kind of, just tap it, okay? I mean, you've been tapping all along and there's, a little dead one in here we're not going to worry about. So then, all right, there's going to be a purple one. This was the orange one. We've got another dark one, but I'm going to put some more red with it. This one here is pretty pretty red. Let's just say that there's one here. We're going to bring that. See, we're just going around in the circle. These are not hard flowers to paint. Um, get a little more red with that. This And this is just our first layer, so don't panic, right? This is our first layer. Here's some red. Um, we said there was a nice big one over here in this corner that was going this way. Almost in pure red now. Right like that. And we're just saying that because here's the back of this. It's all going this way. Because there's another little gold one, kind of a yellow and orange one uh, behind it in front of that. There's another little one that just taps in here that we're not talking about. He's just in here like that. Leave a little center for him. Okay. So there's that one. Then I just build up the things. And right next is a light orange one. Above this one is a nice light orange one. So I can put that in here like that. Maybe make him a little bigger. Just turn the brush around. Have it pointing toward me. Just flip it around like this. Okay. Heel stays in the center. Toes out to you. Yeah, that's it. Toes out. That's a good way to put it. Just like a wheel, right? So there's that bright, bright orange one. Then right in here is going to be a dark green area. So here's another bright orange one. Probably not as far out as I wanted. I had it, but here's another bright orange one like this. Like that. Hoot, toot, toot. Yeah. Okay. And then if I add a little bit of yellow oxide to that color, okay, and a little bit of the um, unbleached titanium, this one is lighter. This one over here is lighter. I don't know why. Let's try a little more on bleached titanium because that's not light enough. This, there we go. This one is orange but lighter. Okay, so we've got a lighter flower here like that. And then we got another bright orange one. More orange than that. That's cad red and yellow but brighter. So here's this one. Ooh, nice and bright, see? Right, like that. This is a really nice and bright one. Like that. There we go. Okay, now, I mean, again, there'll be some layers on that, but you see how we're laying these out? So people say, I don't understand how you know where you're going on this. Now I've wiped my brush off on my towel. Now I'm going to go into yellow and white. Just yellow and white, and then maybe a little yellow oxide. So there we go, yellow 
white yellow oxide and I've got to just wipe my brush off and I'm going to come around here and say right here is another one kind of this is our big yellow flower now I could have painted this white if I'd wanted it really bright but I can put a little bit of orange over the top of it like this the kind of the yellow was underneath Okay, that's our big kind of yellow one okay so far so good then we're going to come up here with the an orange one above that and this one is going to again come down this way it's going to be heavier on the right side than the left side with the dots where it's going to be going but there you go a little bit more orange there we go we're getting up into here this area and then we're fitting in a tiny one in here. Let's just put a little bit more red with that because we're fitting in a tiny one in here that's just tucked in. We're not talking about this one that much. Little tiny one in there. Here's orange. Then we're coming back to our yellow and I'm just going to put yellow on the brush and create another one right here. I'm not going to rinse the brush but I have all these colors on it so it's going to mix. Does that make sense? It's just going to mix if I add the other color one like this whoa like that there we go yeah, you probably could never make the same twice okay then back into our orange and we're coming right next to the yellow and there's another orange one here and I had this is just where I had the circle so there we go just a cad red there we go there's another orange one yes this is working right along aren't you pleased and then up above this one I think I told you that we had one of our um, first satellites. Oh, he's the radar. Yeah, he's, up. yeah, he's kind of going up, but there was a little yellow one that was going up first. So let's do that one. We had a little yellow one, kind of going up like this, just using the brush. He was going up this way. We're just we're not talking about him like that. And then above him was this little this little orange one that was back to going this way a little bit not so round on this one this was almost oval okay that this one was almost oval like that there you go and um, and uh, all right so I'm going to rinse wipe my brush off because I've got a lot of paint on it okay now what's happened over here well do you see how this one sort of disappeared back here you go this one's disappeared back here see we had the brown underneath and that sort of disappeared this one's disappeared. This is where you do the layers. There's a little bit of light, a little bit of yellow in here on this one. Just get some yellow on this. Here's some layers. This one sort of disappeared. Put a little light on that one. Okay. So it's a little bit more deliberate than the first one I did. You see that? I'm, I'm making a, the flowers are in a little bit more deliberate pattern. I was debating whether even to do this for you guys or not for YouTube, and I thought, well, I think this is, can be very valuable in that to understand you know how to do the patterns. So that's why we're doing it. So we're going to come up here and, and do the second coat Besides on this one. Besides teaching a different style too. Yeah, it's a totally different style. If you haven't tried this, it's just totally different style. Sock and folders, you'll be challenged. Yeah, well, I don't know though. The, they might like the pattern part, you know. So there, so you see how, so remember I told you there was a triangle? Do you see my triangle? I see it. You see my triangle there was there and then I think we had another little one coming off this way that I didn't think I drew in but there's a little one just kind of sideways like that there's a little flower and then we've got over here um, we've got some nifty little flowers we've got some that are doing this all out by themselves they've got stems but other than that these are the lone lone flowers and then we've got one kind of going this way and it's probably a little more yellow oxide going this way kind of just half a flower right it's half a flower here's half a flower okay half a flower and then this flower is looking up get get lots of paint or this won't work this will be hard to do with student grade paint I don't think it'll cover for you and we're gonna tap in another one right in here a little bit lower one and have these all kind of be a little bit flatter looking up like that and then See, it's coming along, and we've got some, just off of here, we've got a nice, big, beautiful, bright yellow one up this way.
kind of looking that way like that kind of a half a flower and then we're going to do a another yellow one here just use the use your brush and make these nice sweeping lines now for this this one see like that there's this half a yellow one and then um, over here there's going to be a purple one here and then all by itself there's going to be a little tiny orange one here just not a very big one we're just saying a little orange one right here all by himself himself is and um, and then bless his heart he put a couple oh these are ones that hadn't done as well I guess he got a couple up here let's get some more red on those got a couple up here that was just kind of doing this up here like that and let's see from balance you see the colors I've got um, here's this yellow one uh, here um, we'll just put another one I'm gonna ignore him now and just kind of make my picture balance because it's not exactly the same as his so I've got one there and I think we want we're gonna bring something down here on the side here like this maybe a half of one down here like that yeah maybe a whole one let's just bring in one down here like that I feel like we need one here um, he didn't have it but I feel like we need it for my picture so you know what we're putting it in so here we go a little bit bright yellow one here we go and we're gonna put this in like that so okay and he had some way off the edge here you just don't do that just don't do that just dumb but we're not doing that well not that he's done but he's, I just don't want to do that right and then he had another little orange one right here remember we had this one and then he had another little guy sticking out here like that so if you want to add some more flowers you can but this is going to get really busy quick right but the big thing is in the center we want to make sure that we have these bright enough and they've had a chance to dry so let's let's get let's lighten up some flowers here like this this is our next layer of light and then I'll go into the orange right on the top of that just tap in some orange you've got to you know if you're not going to paint them white first then you really have to layer these okay do you see that and there's quite a bit of paint on here when we're doing this and the same thing with these we're definitely layering these uh, flowers um, and when I dry them I can come back and do individual highlights but everybody's got to have at least two or three layers of color and um, that's why I'm you know for instance here's these a little bit yellower let me just wipe the brush off and just grab yellow now remember my brush is dirty I'm not I'm not um, I'm not uh, washing it I want yellow and white though not just pure cad yellow this is where having lots of different yellows would be good if you owned a lot of different yellows so it would be a bad time to play with those um, I think we said this was lighter I think we said this one went up here was lighter I think we said this was lighter um, for sure we did something we said something about this one and we must have right maybe this is a brighter orange right here this is a nice that's yellow this is a nice bright orange color here nice bright orange so as you can kind of see what I'm doing here I'm just going over and then because acrylics dry darker so you may thought you've just done this wonderful job of getting these light flowers and then discovered that you really hadn't and that's not very helpful so let's take a little bit of this light color and say here you can now you can start doing some individual brush strokes if you want um, start adding some you know just a few little petals but I don't think you have to do much really because you don't want all these flowers to say you don't want all yellow ones you don't all, want all orange ones you want these all slightly different now we're going to get into a lizard crimson and yellow and um, that's a different orange okay I know that sounds kind of crazy but it's a little bit different orange so this is where reds don't hurt you let me just dry that because at this point I think I'm just mixing and so I want to just well I could dry it John or I could just work on the bottom here for a little bit maybe we'll do that we'll take this now look I want some I don't want quite I'm gonna take a little brown and mix it into that orange 
And I'm going to start warming up the, um, the table back up in here. Just coming up with these, this is the next layer of these darks. Um, uh, the, the table, now see how it's getting kind of warmer? And this is a lighter color. This is a shorter brush. Please notice that than the one we started with. So we're adding this warm, we're lightening up the table. Okay. Got to see that, yeah. And um, I want to fix one thing. I think I don't like this. I want to fix, I don't like this. Looks like it's shooting back too strongly. Yeah, I'm going to just correct that while I'm doing it, the table. Let's just paint this out right here like that. There, now I'm going to redo the vase with a smaller brush. It really was too big a brush to do that first vase. There you go. Let's, there you go. This has got to curve around like this, right? There! Isn't that just so much better? Yes. Okay, so there. So much better. Sometimes you just have to do these things. When you see it, fix it. Hold it up to a mirror if it starts to look off to you. Just if you're not sure what's wrong. Hold it up to a mirror. I've got a little bit of white in this now. Kind of lightening this up around here. This fall vase of flowers. So different. I mean, I'm telling you, it's kind of fun to do something a little different. Just, it's got something a little lighter here down in the front. Okay. And, um... He's got these beautiful magenta flowers. Let me show you how that works. A little magenta and a little bit of the periwinkle, a little bit of the blue, but mostly magenta. And he's got this beautiful purple flower right in here like that. Isn't that gorgeous? Just the idea of that color. And he's got another one right up here that's sticking out up this way. And, it, and it's sort of accented with some of the darker um, magenta, like that. So just, there you go, something like this. He didn't have a lot of these. He just had like about three of these purple ones. Um, he for sure had this one. Put a little bit of blue in it. He sure had that one and th those two. And I'm looking at, I really, just those two were really, I guess he did a little of that color up here, but he really didn't have any more of those. It just those were the, kind of the odd, odd colors in the bouquet. So then what he did, though, was he took, took phthalo green and a little dosny purple and made something really dark. And what we not, so something really dark in here. This section has to be really dark. Yeah. Like that. This is this little area here is really dark, and it's a little bit dark in here. There's some little dark areas that were. This is how he got the contrast for the flowers to show up, right? And the same thing back in here. He sort of tweaked this. He said this was dark this way. So now you see this little bit of dark green here. What that did. Um, was, um, you know, your eye goes first to the lightest light and the darkest dark. So there he just sort of tricked your eye into going over here by these yellow orange flowers. See? So it's kind of, and then back over here, if we took some phthalo blue and added to that, we could say that back over here we won't need, um, we need something very dark in the blue. See, we're going to come back in this area. And we want something very dark around here. And it, it, we got it really dark next to the vase, right like this. So you see that vase. And then there's like a blue line here. And a blue line here. And then there was a very nice dark line. We're not going to do the whole decoration on the vase. because but we do something like that. And so now we've got a little bit more attention on the vase. He had a pretty decoration around the front, and it just probably was on his vase. But, you know, just because it's on your vase doesn't mean you have to paint it in. That's something I can share with you right now. Just because it's in the photograph doesn't mean you have to add it. Ask yourself, does it need to be added? 
So what can you the, take away without changing the story? Yeah, what can you take away? So here we're going to put the little vines up to this. Right, like this. And this one's got a little vine here. This one's going to get a vine. Now, probably at this point, you probably need to dry it so you don't... Um, okay. And um, we may add some more flowers, but for sure we've got these in here, right? And um, put a little dark by that flower. So then we're going to take some yellow, right? I need to not change anything else. And in here, like this, what I want you to do is create a, a little leaf that's coming from the flower pot. And just right in here, like this, you had a few little leaves. We're going to put another flower, but here's this little leaf that went over the edge of the pot. It was pretty dark right there. So remember we had that big dark spot right there? Well, we don't anymore because then he's got a little leaf You're coming down like that. We're doing that. And then a little bit of yellow oxide on the brush. And then right here, he's got a little yellow leaf like that. Now, we haven't mixed anything. We're mixing the green um, on the go. On the go by just adding the leaves. We're going to just say here's a leaf like that and you, you, this is so f I think this is really interesting how this works because you, you'd think you had to do a lot but you don't you just have to have a few highlights here and there so here's a there something like that so we've got some leaves in there I've done all this without drawing anything now if you look at the you know you can see this face right which is pretty you see this then we're going, so what can we do to really pop this up? What I think from a balance standpoint, since we made this a little bigger, is I might take another little flower and add it here. Just kind of put it in here like that. Just bring it down. Notice I had a little green on my brush. So it made an interesting little flower going down this way. Okay. Add another one there. Um, I might increase the size of this one here because I think it could be bigger. There. Okay, so from a balance standpoint, now all we have to do, and you're going, we, what do you mean all we have to do? Mm -hmm. All we have to do is um, start d darkening our colors. Like, for instance, up here, we can darken something up here. Let's just go into the reds. Let's just go find a red and darken this this flower right here. Don't cover up all your orange. Let's uh, darken up this flower. Can we darken up this one? Add some more reds. A little bit of darker reds in here. A little bit of red and blue makes a really pretty kind of purpley color. I mean, there we go. Let's do that. Let's pull up. Some of these back in this way were darker, so we're going to add some color there. Remember I told you there was a light kind of in a dark side, so we had sort of some darker ones up here like that. And over here, just kind of underneath them, they were a little bit darker. And you're going, what are you painting? Stop, what are you painting? Wait for me. And um, this one for sure had something darker in it. Okay. Let's try it. Let's dry it. Now let's just take a minute and dry it. Then we'll add some more light colors. All righty. Okay. So in order for you to see this video, you had to get up on YouTube. And if you didn't have internet, like you can't watch it, right? But sometimes we don't have internet. Maybe you're traveling and you want to be able to paint and sit there with your laptop or your iPad or your, your phone and you want to sit out on a campground somewhere or uh, maybe go visit relatives and they live out in the boondocks and don't have good internet and you want to still paint. Well, that's a one reason and just one of many, but certainly one great reason why you want to check out our downloadable videos that you can buy and own forever and uh, keep playing back and no uh, monthly or weekly subscription necessary. You own it forever and we have some fabulous titles that uh, I know you're going to love and some aren't even in our academy. They're exclusively for our downloadable website. So check out, what's the website?
Ginger Cook on Demand. Ginger Cook on Demand. I knew it. I just had a senior moment there. See you then. One. All right, we're back. All right, so this was kind of, I mean, I, I think this is a really interesting painting, and I'm thinking, wow, just, you think about that, we've got the three yellows. We need some brighter yellows over here. Can you see that to balance it? So let's take some yellow and some yellow. unbleached titanium. That's kind of a nice light color, kind of a straw color, yeah? Maybe a little yellow oxide with that. Kind of, yeah, let's go, let's make that color. And we, what we want to do is we want to um, lighten this flower right here like that. We're going to just add some more light colors to some flowers. We're going to get this one's going to get a little lighter. Keep that center darker. And uh, for sure, I want to lighten this one. Wow, yes, for sure. We want to lighten that one. See how we're turning on the lights? This is what we're doing right now. Is what we're doing is we're turning on the lights. Uh, are these flowers, okay? Turning on the lights. I want to lighten up this one uh, down here like this. Let's just get some lighter ones, lighter areas here. Um, up here, I think I want a very nice light orange up here. So let's come back up here and lighten this one up with a lighter orange like that. And um, how about one of these that get a little bit brighter up here? Um, th that side's kind of darker, but we could have a little bit of light right over here on this one. A little bit of orange. You'll notice that I'm just keeping my brush, um, allowing just maybe I want two, three bright spots, but not the whole flower, okay? And the same thing here. I want, I want something light here. I'm going to put a little white with this color. Just take some titanium white now. There we go. And I want this flower here a little bit lighter. I'm starting to swirl around the brush strokes now. See, I'm just started making actual brush strokes with a little bit of orange on top. Kind of in a pinwheel. I would say what, what I'm doing here is almost a pinwheel um, area where this just keeps spidering around. Okay and maybe some lighter stuff on top okay like that okay and I want that lighter and I want this a bit lighter here let's just pull something lighter off of here every time you do a layer it gets a little bit brighter here's a little bit of red coming here maybe a little bit of red on this one a little bit of orange um, this has got a very beautiful yellow center. Let's just grab a glob of yellow paint and drop it in there. That's the yellow center on this one. Should we put in a few yellow centers? This one's got a yellow center. Whoops. Too much paint. Let's go back with some red and fix that. Coming off of this flower here. Definitely needs another coat of red. See? And as you start putting in the centers now, this one had a very bright yellow center. So does this one. They all don't, though. They all don't have yellow centers. This one had a yellow center. Um, this orange one had a yellow center. What other color did they have? Some of them don't have centers. They didn't have any. So they just mm. he just didn't give them all yellow centers. So you, your eyes wasn't just a bunch of polka dots, right? right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, I think the idea was to not have your eyes. Some of this, they're just, we just played. I've left some dark blue in a couple places to, to explain centers. This one, for instance, had another light little orange flower in front of it, like this. This one had a flower coming in front of it. So it was there. But, you know, just some of the flowers have to be detail. Some of the flowers have to be stars, and the rest are supporting cast. So they don't, you don't have to have as much as you'd think in the way of, um, uh, detail on every flower. You just have to have some that have it. For instance, let's just pull out some more orange on this one. And the same thing here. This orange kind of got against the... Um, you see that? It goes take a little magenta and yellow and make a beautiful orange. Like that. Okay. So, like, for instance, this flower back here is very dull. 
and it has to have this next layer to even show up. Does that make sense? And almost some pure color on it. You just have to have it. And that's where I think what happens to people is say, my colors aren't as bright as yours, but you may not have done as many layers. Even the magenta and uh, ultramarine blue and white, which you've got this beautiful sort of, I think I'm out of ultramarine blue. Let's see if there's any in here. Yeah, magenta and ultramarine white, which is this really nice purple color, okay? A little bit more magenta in it, uh, more white. And it really mixed that one up. So, so, you know, so you've got, you know, you've got this light flower here. Well, here's the next. Um, I don't have enough white on there. Here's the next layer of this one. It's a little bit lighter right here. The same thing here. There's some little bits of light on this one that aren't sh that didn't show up before. See, when I do it again, it's starting to peek through, and that's where the. Um, Let's see, I need to put the ultramarine blue out, I think. We can talk about that. So, because uh, now we need to put, in order for these flowers to show up, we have to play with the background a little bit, too. Okay, so here's our ultramarine blue. Okay. So, let's talk about this background. Here's white. Here's ultramarine blue. Make this light color. A little tiny bit of magenta. All right, see that? So I've got this light kind of periwinkle color. Now, where these flowers are, I want it lighter back in here, a couple places. Where these flowers are, I'm going to add some of this light, light purple color. Because you're going to see it, you're going to see them more when I do that. So even though we just generally, in general, we did, yes, we did, we put in some of these colors, right? Um, when we start to, let's see, I wish that was mixed better. Okay, let me rinse, wipe the brush. There we go. So we start putting in these lighter colors in here to get, to, so that it draws your eye to the flower. You've, you've got to think about that in terms of where's my eye going to go. Here I can put some of that blue here on the vase, a little bit of this purple color on the vase, a little bit of blue. I know I want it a little bit darker down in here. And for sure I want it lighter up here. Some white. Now when you see how much white that is, you'll see I scoop most of it up and take it off. But I want to blend this area in here. I want the front of this face a bit lighter. Like that. Almost like it's a cloud. Here like this. There you go. And I'm going to make this lip a bit wider than than I had it originally. Okay. There you go. So all of that kind of con kind of contributes to the overall design of the piece. Like that. Let's do a little bit of light right there, and a little bit of blue on the sides. Remember, we just it's got a little bit darker there with the white in the middle. And you'll see me all the time wiping off the brush. So I want it whiter here, whiter right there. And then I want a little bit of blue here on the sides here, like that. There. These are all just kind of things going that way. There you go. So then you've got to ask yourself, where else do I want these colors? I want that little periwinkle color somewhere. Um, See what I mean? See how I'm just sort of lap. This is where the layers come in. Does that make sense, John, to you? Because you're over there kind of quiet, and I know I'm talking a lot, but I'm trying to really explain how to do this. Well, you can, yeah. <clears throat> you're manipulating the eye. So the eye is yeah, wandering so around like, the whole picture, and you can't really interrupt you when you're on that flow. So Yeah, so here's some a little bit of thalo on. green and white and a little yellow, right? So it's just a little kind of bright green color. And I'll put a touch of magenta in it to tone it down. Okay, so it's not too bright, just like like less than one percent. I want to come in here like this and add a bit of this bright green in here. We had it before, but it's not as bright. Now let's see, can we add some of this bright green? If we put a little bit more white in that, could we bring some light green in this area? 
See, once you start with this, with the backgrounds, you can sit there and you know what your what you know your colors are. You can add the fifth layer, the sixth layer of color uh, to your um, painting. Because remember, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So if you're not, you, if, if if something isn't showing up, this came up the other day in personal art coaching. Something wasn't showing up for one of our one of my members, and she sent the painting. She was trying to do orange leaves on top of um. Uh, some orange foliage and couldn't understand why the orange wasn't showing up. You can't, you got to have a different color. You just can't do it, right? And, uh, um, and so you get, you've got to just make a decision. Okay, so that's not working. So look, look what's happening here. Where I'm, see how I'm lightening up? This is my next layer of light on the background. Um, and you see how I'm, I want it lighter next to these, um, these flowers. Yeah, particularly up in this direction. And if I get if I get too much there, I can come back with a little darker, more in the turquoises, and put the other background color back. If I get if I got carried away, but I want a little bit lighter. See, so that those flowers show up, and that's that's really all there is to it. If there's a, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So if we're saying that this is sort of light up this way. We're saying that this was all some sort of weird drapery he had that we're not doing, but here, see, we're going to bring some light down in here like that, back in here, bring some down from the top, the same with the layers. Okay, so this isn't the kind of thing you do at a painting party, for sure, we understand that, right? But if you really kind of want to learn how to paint, this is sort of, this is one way to paint something. It's not the only way to paint something. This is just one style of painting. And you may find it very relaxing to do this because you can keep manipulating the colors. There's a little green and um, white and a little yellow oxide, I think. We're going to do that color. See, it's just a little bit of gold color. And I want some gold leaves right here. Just a little bit more yellow oxide. I want some gold leaves right here. A little bit more green with that. There, see, a little bit of gold here. And I think... I want this leaf a little bit brighter here in the front. Maybe I'll put a little more gold on it. He had it kind of, see, he probably, he had it a little bit darker, but I want to bring your eye forward and then into here like that and just bring a leaf in there. And just a few this way. I don't really, at this point, I'm just sort of balancing out the picture. I want something a little brighter here. So that I'm going to darken that, put a little dark in there. So now you're going to ask yourself, we're pretty good right now as far as the colors go on this. We're almost done. You're going, really? Do you think we're almost done? I'm going, yeah, we're almost done. So now all I'm doing now is, um, you know, playing with a little bit of color. Here's a little bit of green, a little bit of light green. I'm just trying to um, uh, get a little bit more contrast. So here's a little bit of yellow here. Remember we said there was a yellow here. Let's put a yellow right there. There's a little yellow flower there. That one. I think we're going to do this one too. We're going to put it this way. And um, for sure here, this one gets one. A little bit oranger though. His isn't as bright. His is like a little light orange. We'll put a little more light orange here. And we're going to bring a little bit more flower down this way here into our grass, into our pot like that. Bring that one down a little bit right there like that. It's a good looking painting. You like it? I think it's kind of, I think it's pretty and it, and it has a little bit more, when you look at this one, it's a little more jumbled, right? There's not the pattern, but when we, when we went ahead and deliberately did a pattern to it, then we, um, you created a full plane. Your we first one was sketch, working out your colors and your Yeah, and how I was going to teach it. I'm going to put another one right up here like that. Another little flower right up there like that, too. Just sort of get that picture pattern going there with a little bit of red and green here. So I we always recommend doing a small painting first. Yeah, if you would do that first, get, to, get it out. Get a sense of how you're going to paint it. Don't start this like 48 by 60 and then complain that it didn't work that you weren't sure how to paint it because that's going to make you crazy. So here's some of these darker 
um, leaves here. Maybe we can put a darker one right there with a little bit of green over it. There, like that little bit of gold, maybe. To, there, okay. So I feel like that's the kind of thing that he had a little bit of a dead flower that kind of sat in here a little bit. And I think you could have a couple of petals, but I don't know about... I don't know if I have a full dead flower and there's such a lively colors and pictures and yeah, so you can, why I'd would, rather you, have why a would few, you bring a downer? I'd rather have a few of these just kind of, this is what happens to my stuff, that they start dropping these little things right there yeah. on the table. That's yeah. much more likely to be, for me, that this would happen like that than the other way. And I think I'll put a little purple center in this one. You know what I mean? I think they can have have that. He didn't do it, but I don't care. I've got some with purple centers. I'm making a mm -hmm. purple center. There we go. Like that, because, well, that's not a good idea. Here, let's put some gold on top of that one. Here, let me just blot that out. There's too much white on the brush. There we go. Let's just make a gold center on that one. Because um, I don't want my eye to go there. It's a bullseye, right? Does that make sense? I don't want a bullseye. So I'm going to make a really bright orange like that. And this is where having all kinds of colors like cad red. Um, do we have some of our Holbein colors now we can show people how you can even just take this to the next level? Let me just show you. I'm, they don't pay me to say this. I'm just saying when you're doing flowers, if you can get some of the brighter colors, the brighter oranges, the brighter yellows, um, it can be really, really effective. Here we have this other new one that we got. Okay. Cinnamon. That other French company. Oh, yeah. Take a look at those I'm offering you this evening. Okay, so we've got, we've got, this is called Luminous Orange from Holbein. Okay. And I want you to see when you want, to want some of these colors uh, to show up, right? I'll just put a bit of this. This is almost too bright for me. Um, well, it might tune down a little bit when it dries. Yeah, but not enough. That's that's a little bit too bright. I, don't I have like light orange? That's naphtha red. Don't I have like light orange in there? That's all I had over like there. Cad, you, ca cad red light. We don't have a cad red light in there. Not not over here. I got a nap red light. I got a nap was, deep red. Here's a okay. Here this, this is the luminous orange again. You I'm, took all of them. Didn't give them back. Here's this gold one. Let's try this one because I. All right, here's this is kind of pretty. This is um, um That's another company. This is this other brand of paint. Cinnamon said to try. It's called um. Is that S word? Acry acry acrylic. Acrylic is French. And um, it's made in France. And uh, let's let's just put a little out here and see what we can do with that because it's almost a sunflower color, and I feel like we just don't have enough bright colors on this. Um. And you got to realize yeah. also the cameras will not be able to pick up as all the subtle colors as much as the eye will. That's true. Person. The eyes, the eyes so. picking it up. I'm just not. Perhaps I'll take some of this luminous orange and add it to some of this. There we go. Let's try that. That's it. I want this flower to be brighter. There we go. Do you see how we're starting to pull up some colors? And um, a little bit maybe more yellows. Um, there's the yellow center in this one. Um, here's a little bit of uh, yellow and luminous. Let's just try that. I just need some brighter yellows, you guys. This was just not, this flower didn't make it for me. So now let's try some orange on top of that. <gasps> Better. Look at that. All right. So see how we just just trying to brighten up a few. Yes and yes. Yeah. Even here. I'm gonna brighten this up. Let's bring some orange down here like this on top. Maybe even some pure cad red. Pure colors is always a good thing. Here's some pure reds. Let's try some reds over here. Pure reds. Never hurts. Let's try some pure red. Oh, there we go. We just we needed to deepen some of these colors. And some, red's one of those funny colors that you almost have to do two or three coats of red to really get it to 
to show up. And um, where, where you have a dark red, if you have a dark red or something, two or three colors are not, you're not amiss doing that. Um, and remember the rule. What is the rule about lights and darks? Whatever there's a light, there's a dark. So I'll put some of this down here like that too. And um, play with that. Now next to this purple, uh, light purple flower, and for that to show up, what do I need? I need a dark right next to it. Yeah? See that if I want this flower to show up, it needs to have enough dark because it's pretty pale to, to just to be put in there. See? So I put a little dark around it. And the same thing over here on this side. If I put a little dark around this one, it's much more likely to show up. Not outlining it per se, but the same thing with this one. And I can go in with the dark color and kind of do something like that. And then they had some green here. Let's take some phthalo green and white. Now, in the midst of this, I'm tapping in a little bit, a little bit of purple on my brush and green. That's pretty. So it's just not a dark, big, dark spot there. There's some color. So all right. So I think I would say that I'm pretty, uh, pretty pleased with that. Um, could have a little bit of red in this um, painting. And remember, wherever you're putting your brush in water, make sure you get all the water out so that when you're doing stuff like this, see, there was a big glob of water there, which was not effective. Here you go. There's the next. That dried. Here's a little bit of the darker red in this, too. Okay. Here, let's just do this. Let's just let's brighten this flower up like that. Almost give it a pink cast. There we go. Little tiny bit of white in there. There's just not much, but he had a little. They'll just say that something like that. There you go to balance that out. So, oh gosh, I think that's just really fun, don't you, John? I think it's looking great. I like the the addition you did of the uh, the greenery. In the front there, the yeah, leaves. yeah, needed the green. You really needed that to calm down your eyeball a little bit. Yeah, because what he had going across his vase, right like this. Don't do it. Don't he do had it. this <laughs> pattern. It almost looked like you know the wreaths that they put on Olympic, yeah, Olympic Olympians. He had like one of those going this way, and it probably was on his vase. But then, then what? Yeah. So, but we do what we could do though. So we have we we could bring some of the lighter gold up this way. Let's lighten it up in the front, a little bit of burnt sienna, like this, because it wasn't that dark right in front of his face. So we should fix that. So what, it's just been like 10 minutes. I know we've been going on, and we haven't told them anything interesting. Uh -oh. I promised people interesting things. Didn't I? I yeah, you I... did. Well, you, well, a lot of interesting things going on here. You, you taught them eye movement and lights and darks and Keeping the water out of your brush. And I guess that's true, right? I, I mean, you said you, you, you didn't pick your little video apart. You got a lot of information you're giving. Now we're looking So for? I want to say that if you if you like if your painting fall, I'm let this dry for a second, and I'm going to come back and add the finishing touches. But if you like your fall pictures, I want you to just let me just put this up for a second because we're going to do the finishing touches on it. But I want you to say one of our most popular pictures last year was Mulberry Hill. And again, I did a very small picture of this first. In fact, we have a video on how I was able to determine the lights and darks on this so that when I did the big one, I had a special video just on this, and we have that in the Academy, so that when we did the big painting of Mulberry Hill, you backed out far enough? Oh, yeah. So here's Mulberry Hill, and you see our fall at night. Isn't that just charming? This is one of my favorite Academy paintings. It's 18 by 24. And... This is what we call an ultimate lesson, one of the, you know, but, you know, we, we build you up to this. And, again, uh, this is a different style of painting than, well, um, what we're doing tonight. than the one we're doing tonight. Uh, we don't just, you know, as much as I loved um, some of the artists that came in the past that have taught, for instance, Bob Ross is a wonderful one, he, you, you just learn to paint like him. What my job is to teach you to paint like you, and by t trying all these different styles, you end up with your own, kind of your own techniques, and you, you're going to incorporate a little bit from everybody. 
um, the lesson that we have, we're releasing this week in our academy is another Impressionist artist, and that is, um, we'll tell you about her. There's the, um, uh, this, this vineyards, and, um, and this uh, little house and everything. And this is very similar to the Norwegian artist if you did, that we released on YouTube in the palette knife. If you did that one, this would be awesome to do that way. And we've got some, so move these out of the way. Uh, so keep dropping stuff. Don't want to drop stuff. No dropping. So if you if you like the um, if you like this type of painting, I think we said next week it was going to be on YouTube. This is what we're going to be painting. Gladiolas. Another. This is Renoir. And and is it different than our? Uh, is a different style. Simil the backgrounds are kind of similar, not quite as dramatic in color, but similar, all right? So follow along with us. Uh, like our channel, subscribe, join our Facebook club where you can really get in the know about what we're doing. Sign up for the newsletter because if you're seeing a premiere somewhere that this was a premiere lesson, then we're somewhere exciting in the world and sharing those videos with our fans that have signed up for our newsletter and really great video tips and places where we're going. We're fun to watch, I think. Yeah, just ask us. Just ask us. <laughs> so, all right. So now you can see that I'm, I'm loving this painting. I hope you are too. And you see how we sort of lightened. We didn't sort of. We lightened it up in the front here a little bit. And see again, I'm doing a few more layers. But we've got the shadow. Let's do a little bit of the purple shadow. Um, and. Um, Let's do a little bit. Let's just get it lighter as we go. Let's just take some Dosnian purple and white and get a little bit lighter purple shadow. Wow, how would that get into that color? I don't want that. All right, a little bit lighter purple shadow as we get away from the vase. Okay? And then let's pull some of this color. I want some bright purple in here. I think that's the color we were missing, is some brighter purple. Wow, because purple and yellow are compliments. Yes. So when we start putting a little bit of purple next to some of this, right, just a few little dots, particularly where the some of the yellow ones are, then they're going to pop out. This is kind of cool. So I want, I want a little bit of purple. Uh, man, I kept getting into that. Did you see that? Well, that's so nice. This is jumping out wants to be used. And, well, it doesn't get to be, so you just sit over there and be good. I want to put a little purple, a little bit of purple here on this flower. Here, let's pu pull that into there. Let me just wipe that off. I don't want the purple on there. I don't want that orange on there. Well, that's pretty. That worked. It had some orange on there, just not exactly there. Okay, good. You can just stay there now and behave. All right. So that's kind of this lighter purple. We want the darker color. Let's just do some dark in here, too. Come out a little further with our shadow. All right. Got a little bit of darker purple around the edges. And as we come on down, we're just bringing some of that color too. So that's really, I think, fun. I hope you think this was a fun picture to do. I, I might look at this tomorrow and want to go back and lighten a few flowers if that happens to you. Give it, just let it rest overnight. See if you don't need to go back and lighten something up as it, as it darkens. I might want to come up here with a brush and just add a few little light. Probably should have used a smaller one, but here like that. A little bit of orange here. Uh, let's see, let's do some cad red right here like that. Just sort of lighten up this a little bit, this flower. Again, you can't, I can't say enough about layers. It's just all about layers, you guys. Just pull out some flowers here. Let's go into the, oh, pure cad red. Let's grab that on this flower right here. Because he had, let's just celebrate this flower with some bright red. Same thing here with this one. We'll just put a little red on this one here on this side of it. Okay. And wow, we've got, um, we've really celebrated um, um, fall. Fall. The and we're going to put a little brown up in here on the side this way. And just up here like this. 
Because he did. And I guess I, I don't want the iridescent, but I can, you know, you, you can do a little bit. Boy, you want to be careful. See, if you do that, then, yeah, no, we want to do that. A little yellow there instead. Let's do a little yellow center on that one. There we go. And here, we'll just, oh, you know me. I could just keep playing with this all night long. So I hope you've had fun with this. I hope you um, uh, share these videos. If you like John and I and, and you say, gosh, I, what can I do, to, you know, to, um, to help others know about you? And one of the ways you can do this is YouTube will tell others about us if you talk to us, if you write in the comments. You know, at the end of this, if you, I'm going to ask you a question. What was the favorite, what was your favorite part about this painting? in this video. I'm just going to ask you that. I'm very interested to know that. L leave us a comment. If you have a question, I'll answer it. I read every one. Ask yourself about, you know, ask us about what, you know, things that you're interested about, but I'm very interested in what you thought about this tutorial and how you liked it. Um, and if you did like it, which I'm certainly hoping you did, if you did like it, um, let's put a little color surprise under here like that. Um, a little bit of green, phthalo green. That's so such a good color, isn't it? Let's come on down here like that. Add some of this color in there. As I'm talking to you, uh, share the videos to put them in a playlist. And um, shout us out. Join our Facebook club, and I want to see what you're painting. Should I sign it? Probably should sign it. I think you got a, I think you got a finished piece. I think I've got a finished piece, too. And you notice that I've got a little bit lighter here. So I went back when we were doing stuff. I lightened the center of the pot a little bit, gave it a little bit of a light. I think uh, it looks good. It pulls it all together. And uh, um, did I tell him anything about this artist at all? Did I tell him about Armand? Uh, very little. You know what? I want to tell you. I want to give you his actual name, Armand Gulliam, G-U-I-L-L. Come on, I'm just going to take him right off it. Ar Armand, G-U-I-L-L-A-M-I-N. And I tell you, look him up on Wikipedia. You know what's cool about him? He had the most awesome signature. They actually have a photograph of his signature. His signature is terrific. I think I have a little video about you know, how's your signature. Man, he really thought it, he really thought it out. Okay, and it's really a cool story about him and how he won the lottery and got to paint full time. French artist, he lived between um, 1841 and 1927. Hang, hung out with all the Impressionists, uh, uh, Paul Gauguin and Camille Pissarro. So, I mean, Van Gogh's brother sold his artwork. This is a cool guy. I think this is a beautiful painting. I hope you love it, and thanks for watching. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next week on another live premiere. Be sure to join us.